Welcome, everybody, to Fox & Friends for this Wednesday. We have uh, a Fox News alert to start this hour with. More airstrikes happening overnight. We've just learned that the U.S. military continued to strike ISIS targets in the country of Iraq and Syria with a mix of attack bombers and fighter aircraft. The strikes hit armed vehicles and a weapons cache in Iraq and Syria. All American aircraft exited the strike zone safely, which is good news. This brings to 198 strikes across Iraq against ISIL or ISIS. Bill O'Reilly joins us live this morning. Good morning. So, Bill, great to see you. I know Killing, uh, Killing Pat is out. You're excited. Even every new book. We're going to get to it in a second, but first things first. Killing ISIL. Uh, Killing, Killing ISIL. ISIL. That's what we like to do. That'll maybe be your next book. All the above. Uh, day two of airstrikes, not like shock and awe anymore. This is a much different situation. Are you happy the way it started? Well, I don't know the word happy. I mean, you don't want to see uh, the United States having to go to war, but it's necessary. Um, you know, we have the finest military military in the world. Uh, we just have to be able to uh, harness it. So yeah, I think that it's an effective uh, tool to send a message to the world that we're just not going to tolerate this kind of stuff. Do you believe that President Obama at this point will take advice from his top advisors, generals, as yes, we've heard I some think at this, in the past? At, now that he is committed to it in the end, they started beheading Americans, that's what tilted it, um, he will uh, do what he has to do from the air. I don't think he'll ever yeah. uh, admit to putting ground troops uh, in the theater. Although they're there already, everybody should know that we have about 2,000 special forces roaming around northern right. Iraq, and they're not sitting around, okay? If they see somebody in black masks, they're going to shoot them. Absolutely. So that's the reality. But I think President Obama now will conduct a campaign like we're seeing on the screen. What did you think about the, the Pentagon yesterday was doing the bomb damage assessment where they said, okay, and we're going to show you the before and after, and the after didn't look that much different than the before, but apparently they, you know, they took out the cable TV or they took yeah. out the satellite dish. It didn't seem like they were, and we had, uh, here on the channel, we had Ralph Peters on last night, and he said, you know, there wasn't really much to this. It, it, the objective should be to kill acres and acres of terrorists. And well, I don't think they want to they they kill civilians or anything like that, but this reminds me of Vietnam where they had the daily uh, um, body counts. The tote. Yeah, and then they would come out and say, well, we're winning, and, and we're doing this, we're doing that. It's more for show, it's more to reassure the American people that we're after these guys. Nothing wrong with it. Um, but I'm not going to second guess the Pentagon. Uh, Ralph Peters is our, we pay him to be a security analyst. I don't really know. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm confident they're doing what they have to do. You've been talking about on the factor, your plan for mercenaries um, and a mission that way, that form. Can you explain that? Yeah, briefly, it's on BillOReilly.com. You know, so I lay it out so I don't want to take a lot of time. But if this is going to happen. We need a worldwide strike force to be able to go to the hot spots in the world and confront uh, Islamic terrorism, the jihadists on the ground. We need that. But why should the United States have to protect the whole world? It's just, it's killing our treasury. Uh, we're coming back with wounded warriors, their arms and legs blown off. And, and what is Germany doing, you know? What is Italy doing? They're not doing anything. So my idea is to, is to raise a force of 25,000 mercenaries, well paid. And who pays? The coalition pays, the 50 nations. And if you don't pay, you don't get any protection. And it's under congressional oversight, trained by American uh, personnel officers and NATO officers. Who's and the boss? Uh, we are the boss. Uh, NATO and Americans lead the force, but the force is multinational. They're the best in the world. And you wouldn't believe how many military people are calling me going, that's a great idea. That's what we should be doing. It doesn't take the place of the U.S. military. It doesn't downgrade. We still have our military, mm -hmm. as does Great Britain and everybody else. This is just a force that can be used as a quick strike force. And believe me, you put that up, those terrorists are going to know somebody's coming for them. Uh, Frank Gallagher, who's with, uh, who wrote the book now, uh, you know, guarding Paul Bremer, he's a Blackwater guy, and he said there's so many guys like him now kicked out of the military or retired out of the military, they'll be willing to do that. All over the world. Right. The finest military people. But we regulated, we the right. United States, under the Geneva Convention and under congressional oversight. So you have uh, mastered uh, taking a popular subject uh, and a very famous person, uh, from Jesus to Patton to Lincoln, and you have found the controversy that still exists today. Where's the controversy with killing Patton? Well, um, the official U.S. Army uh, documents say he was killed in an accident. You know, car, a car accident. accident. Right. A fender no, bender. We don't believe it. Why? No, we believe he was murdered. But I'll get into that for a minute. But, but the relevance of Patton today, I, it's, it's amazing. We need a general like Patton. We, the United States, need somebody who can instill fear into the enemy. What would he do? How would he handle ISIS? The Nazis ISIS? feared him. 
They, they fear George Patton. And Hitler uh, devised all his campaigns north of Patton so that Patton wouldn't be in the theater. But of course, then Patton turned into the Battle of the Bulge and, and rescued the Americans who were surrounded by uh, the Germans up in Belgium. Um, but we need somebody like that. And, and when you read Killing Patton, you're going to apply it to today. You go, where is our Patton. All right, anyway, getting back to his But don't death. you need a commander-in-chief who is willing to have a ruthless guy like Patton? Well, FDR was so-so was uh, about Patton, and Truman hated him. And Eisenhower and Patton were like this, yeah. because Eisenhower was a politician. Eisenhower never fought in a battle, ever. All right? Even and though Patton, he's an allied supreme do you, commander. Do you believe President Obama has a little Patton in him? No. President Obama and George Patton are about as far away yeah, as me and Kilmeade. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Which is not. <laughs> Look how he dresses. By court order. I mean, there's, there's no way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the death of Patton, uh, where do you see what we lay out? And we don't say for sure he was murdered, but after the evidence that we compiled, it's, right. it's almost inconceivable. The picture you paint is this. The war is over, but Patton knows we should not disarm. The Russians slash Soviets cannot be trusted. They're trying to take, and they did take, all of Eastern Europe. He's trying to urge Eisenhower to do something. He thinks Eisenhower is a fool for doing it. No one's listening to him. And then you talk about two separate times prior to his death where he was almost killed in bizarre right. accidents. There were assassination attempts on Patton, but you would expect that during the war. However, Patton was going to come back to the United States to do a speaking tour. He got in this accident one day before he was scheduled to come back to the USA. He was going to do a, a nationwide speaking tour telling Americans that Stalin and the Russians are trying to take over the world and that we should harness everything we have, not leave the theater, and go after them. And Stalin was weak at that time because his army was depleted after defeating the Germans. Stalin wanted him dead, and Stalin got him. So is the answer to the question, who killed Patton, the Russians? Yes. In my opinion, humble opinion, but again, I lay it out, Riveting. And, and there's a lot of American uh, duplicity in this book, uh, the OSS, which is a forerunner of the CIA. It's a thriller. This book's a thriller. Yeah. And it's not just well, about Patton. It's no. also about Hitler and Stalin and Churchill. Yeah, we do what we always do. We put you, the reader, in the bunker with the Fuhrer, in the Dachau with Stalin, in the White House with FDR, so you get all the inside dirt. A lot of gossip, a lot of good stuff in this book. Well, and you make people care about history. I think that's key for learning. I mean, many people have to read it. You want to read it, and these are complex leaders. That yeah, and it's fun to read it. That's the difference between my history books and most history books are kind of tough to read. These are fun to read. You don't right. nod off to her. Uh, the new book is called Killing Patton. Bill O'Reilly, thank All you right. very much for joining nice us. Nice to see All you guys right. as always.